Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Busisi with Lamina Harudi. If you haven't subscribed already, may you please click that subscribe button there at the bottom and also click on the notification bell so that every time when I upload a video, you will be notified and be the first one to, to view it. So today we are going to do or to learn about the tests that are done in a chemical pathology laboratory so that you will know which test do we do based on that information, that clinical information that you'll be given to your doctor that will direct your doctor to which test your doctor will do. So I've tried to group them into their groups as much as possible. And the tests that I'm going to talk to you about, um, they are not limited to those ones. As you know, each laboratory will, will differ on which test that they do. But more or less, most of the tests they are the same in each and every different um, company. So the first test that we'll do, which is the most commonly ones that we find in a chemical pathology lab, it is the kidney function test. So if you went to a doctor complaining about a back pain or anything, and if your doctor suspects that you might be having any kidney problem, what a doctor will do will request a U and E plus creatinine test. So basically, what is this? Um, what I will do, I will write um, the test in their abbreviations as much as possible. And then you will say as we continue with the course, we will unpack each and every test when we get there so that we do not waste time. So what does U and E? So this U stands for urea and the E stands for electrolytes plus the creatinine. So basically, what are those um, electrolytes? So the electrolytes that we usually do will be sodium potassium, chloride, bicarbonate and bicarbonate. And then they will also do the urea, which is that U there, and creatinine. So these are the most, um, like the first line of tests that the doctor will usually do when you go there as part of routine. And other tests that we we'll also do as part of kidney function will also be um, the CMP, which is calcium, magnesium, and phosphate. So usually these ones, um, mostly they will do it if they suspect that you have any um, kidney stones. And they will also do cystatin C. Basically, cystatin C, you will see as we are going to do this test in depth, um, it's also part of the kidney function test, but it's not done um, in a normal routine laboratory uh, because we usually do creatinine to check um, the filtration function of the kidney. But cystatin C, it is also done, especially for those patients whereby a creatinine uh, will not show like a clinical picture due to whatever condition that the patient will be having. So those are the kidney function tests that usually your doctor will request if they suspect you have any problem in your kidneys. And then another group of tests that is done in a chemical pathology laboratory, it is the liver function test. So with these ones, usually those ones when your doctor will request them if they suspect if these you have a condition that or your symptoms they are um, directing your doctor to check if maybe there might be any um, some sort of um, liver problems maybe if you have yellow eyes that as well can give your doctor um, a mind to request liver function test to check if there's nothing wrong with your kidneys so what are those tests it is TP which is your total protein albumin AST, ALT, ALP, and the gamma, the gamma GT. And also what I will do, I will also add LDH, which is your lactate dehydrogenase. So LDH basically, previously it was part of the liver function test, but now they've seen that because your LDH will be high in any problem whereby you have a breakdown of your cells, then it's going to be high, but I will put it as part of the 
liver function test and what they will you also do they'll do the bilis which is the total bili and your direct bili or you can say the conjugated bilirubin as well it's also part of the um, liver function test and also what i can add to the ammonia because remember um ammonia is converted in the liver into urea so that it can be excreted in your urine so if there's a problem with your liver definitely your ammonia will be your ammonia levels in your blood will also be affected so i'll also put it here as part of the liver functioning test even though it's not done routinely is a liver function test as well so basically those are the liver function tests and then we also have the lipogram or the lipid profile so when they want to check if you have any dyslipidemia of some sort the doctor can request the, the lipid profile so when we talk about the lipogram most of the time we're talking about the four tests which is triglycerides cholesterol high density lipoprotein and also the low density lipoprotein so basically these are your routine lipogram test but as part of um the lipid profile in the chemical pathology we also do the apolipoprotein b and the apolipoprotein a as well and together with the lipoprotein small a so all of these they will tell you about the state of your lipids in your blood so the doctor will request them there as well so it does not end there so the other group that we have the both tests that will be done in a campus lab will also be the cardiac markers so these ones is when if you are always complaining about a chest pain maybe you might think that you might be having a heart, heart attack of some sort and then your doctor will request the cardiac markers which is composed of myo myoglobin the total ck CKMB and also the troponins, the troponin I and the troponin T. So these as well, they are the routine cardiac markers that when the doctor suspects that the patient might be having a myocardial infarction, that the doctor will um, request. But as well, it's part of the test that we'll do usually when there's um, heart problems. We'll also do ProBNP. And homocysteine as well can also fall in in this category then another group of tests that will be done we will also do um test if let's say um you have thyroid problems probably you you are busy gaining weight a lot and you don't know why because you're not in a mission of getting weight and it's not genetic and all some sort of things and all the other things you are feeling warm and all those symptoms then your doctor what my uh, what your doctor might do might request thyroid functions to think to check if you don't have um hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism depending on um the symptoms that you are showing so the thyroid function test so the routine ones that will be done is the tsh t3 and t4 so these are the routine tests that will be done to check for thyroid function but the, the, the thyroid test they don't end there there is also tg which is thyroid globulin atg atp or your thyroid peroxidase antibodies so they can also be done there and to add on this here i also want to add PTH, which is the parathyroid hormone as well.
but those ones are not the ones that will be requested routinely. So the ones that will be requested is the, uh, the first three, which is TSH, T3, and T4. So you will see when and how, when we are going to deal with this test um, one by one. Another group of tests that we will do in a Kempeth lab, it is the hormones. So we'll do test some hormones as well. So the hormones that we will test for will be the normal ones, FSH, LH, estrogen. We will also do beta HCG, cortisol, Diaz, and so on. So like I said, they will not be um, limited to these ones that I will write on the board. And the other group that we'll have as well, we'll also check for tumor markers. So if your doctor might be suspecting or they want to see if you have any cancer, then your doctor might request the tumor markers depending on which part of your body that is affected. So the tumor markers that we will do is the CA125, which is cancer antigen number 25. We'll also do a CA153, CA199, and then CEA. So these are the mostly the ones that are mostly routinely um, requested. And we'll also do the alpha beta protein, PSA, to check for the prostate cancer for men. We'll also and the doctor might also request um, that test as well. We can also add gastrin here. The gastrin test can also be able to, to give us indication if you have a zolinga lesson syndrome. And then the 5-HIIA as well. It's also a tumor marker. But there's still uh, more to those ones, so I will end there. So those will be the tumor markers. And then another group, there's those tests that we'll do when we want to test for carbohydrate metabolism, like the metabolism of, for example, let's talk about your glucose, or if you want to check if you have diabetes, and if your diabetes is controlled or not. So the test that will usually be requested in a diabetic patient will be the glucose, so the glucose can either be fasting or random. It can be used for the diagnosis or the control. And we we'll also do HbA1c. So the HbA1c to determine whether are you controlling your glucose and also fructosamine. So HbA1c and fructosamine, they have the same function. The only difference is the timeline on how are you monitoring your blood glucose level as a diabetic patient. Then we also do some drugs. So we do test for some drugs. So we test for therapeutic drugs and also drugs of abuse. So I'm gonna start with the therapeutic drugs. So basically the therapeutic drugs, the reason why we would do them is to check for, um, basically it's for therapy like for therapeutic reasons, to see if that specific medication that your doctor is giving you, is it eff effective or not. So, we can do, we do some antibiotics like vancomycin, tobramycin, amikacin, and gentamicin. So these are the antibiotics that will also test them for therapeutic reasons to see if maybe um, are they effective or are they within their therapeutic range that will be effective to deal with that specific infection. Then we can also do phenytoin, phenobarb. Um, and benzo. Diazepines and so on. So there is quite a few of the therapeutic drugs that we usually do, like both digestion, carbamazepine, even paracetamol. We usually do it, and also 
salicylate to check for your um for aspirin poisoning and so on and then the drugs of abuse that are done in a camp at the lab so these ones will usually be tested if you are suspected that you are under some influence of a specific drug or maybe you are being suspected that you are a drug user it can be from the police as part of um they are solving their case or it can be maybe from a workplace because they found you looking somehow and they want to it can be many reasons why they would usually be um requested these drugs of abuse so which number one is alcohol so we do test the amount of alcohol that will be present in your blood and cannabis also do test for cannabis cotinin so cotinin basically it will be tested on those patients who are buying usually this one is done by the insurance companies when they want to see if are you smoking or not and then we can also add barb here and bands as much as we said barb fellow barb and bands they fall under therapeutic drugs but they can also fall under drugs of abuse uh, because other patients they do abuse them so you see the sample time usually will be different between the, the two so we do test for cocaine as well as opiates mandrax and so on so we test quite a few different types of drugs of abuse and as well we also do test some um vitamins as well to check for their concentration in the human blood so the vitamins that we will do to vitamin d the vitamin b12 and we'll also do folate or you can also call it folic acid or vitamin B9. And then there's also other miscellaneous tests. So I call them miscellaneous because it's a little bit difficult to group them. So here it's when we are talking about um, osmol, which is the osmolality test. And there is also urobilinogen that we will test for porphobilinogen and we can also we also do pH to test for the pH in the in urine and I can add seroloplasmy as well and so on so there's quite a few of tests that we do in a chemical pathology lab but you will see them more and more as we delve into each one of them so that you can get to know exactly um what they're about how do we test them and what is the reason for testing what does it mean when that uh, test is high and what does it mean when the test it is lower so basically um that's it from me this is what i wanted you to know as um, a start of us doing um, our tests so that you know what do we do in a campus lab so that you will be able to pair it with the sample type as we go along and then when we start doing each and every test then you can say oh voila and again it can also help you as well to know which tests are done for which can either be an organ or which specific um, resin so thank you very much for tuning in for watching up until the end until next time to do